you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one, buddy. Take care. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. How's it going? So I got a quick video for you on my 2017 Wrangler JKU. Got this a couple months ago and I really wanted to do a fancy video with uh, music and lightning bolts and awesome shots, but uh, it's a repair video unfortunately, but that's okay. So before we get started, I wanted to give a special shout out to our number one fan, Thomas. Thomas, this video is for you, buddy. Hope you enjoy it. Um, thanks for tuning in and watching all of my videos. Number one fan, buddy. Thank you very much. So uh, let me set the story up with uh, why we're doing repairs of this uh, 2017 JK Wrangler. Got this back in, I guess it was June, and uh, we take the top down, the doors off, back into a Wrangler. I'll throw a picture of uh, the 1991 YJ I had a couple years ago. I love that thing, man. There's nothing more... Nothing more fun than just driving down the road with the doors off, your feet out, top down. So anyway, I'm reminiscing. So this one came uh, came around at a local dealership. We thought it through for about five or ten seconds, and we had to get it. So uh, the first video isn't a fancy lightning bolt music video, rock star. It's a repair video. Daughters were driving the Jeep, uh, I guess it was yesterday afternoon, and a whole bunch of lights came on the dash. A bunch of beeps, a bunch of lights. These kids did awesome. Uh, one of them took a picture of the dashboard so they can, uh, you know, later on when they get home, tell us what they saw on the dashboard. They even researched what the lightning bolt and that little engine icon meant. Um, my uh, older daughter just started driving a few months ago, so uh, luckily they were really close to home, so they, they were able to make it home. Uh, but through their quick quick decision-making skills and they kept their cool uh, They were able to uh, you know go from you know lights dashing lights all over the dashboard to assessing what the issue was to getting home safe and then reporting to a Good old mom and dad that uh, there's a problem with the Jeep. So I got home and uh, They said dad there's something wrong with the Jeep. I said of course it's a Jeep. It's not a big deal um, so we started to research and uh, well, I guess the uh, any, any good part of a uh, research is to uh, go out and take a test drive. So let's take a test drive. Let's pull some codes and let's see what this bad boy's telling us. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. But uh, my daughter did say the lightning bolt on the dash has to do something with the throttle body or the throttle sensor or something like that. Uh, I did some quick research on this, and you guys know already by now that this thing is a drive-by wire. Uh, so there's no throttle cable from the gas pedal to the throttle body. It's all done electronically. Um, super new to me. Um, you know, I feel like George Jetson here uh, driving this thing. Uh, I'm used to a cable attached to a uh, attached to the gas pedal that goes through the firewall and into the throttle body. So anything after 1999, man, I don't touch it. But I have to because this thing is mine now, so it's time to learn. So let's go learn. All right. All right. So let's check these codes. Here's what the dash looks like. You can see we got the check engine light and the little lightning bolt thingy here. That's never a good sign. Lightning bolts are great, but not in the dash. So let's read the codes. OBD2 scanner. Connects to the little doodad down there. Keys in the on position. Let's see what we get. Uh, can you see with that glare? Yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay, code P2135. And P0123, throttle position sensor circuit high. So, throttle pedal position sensor. Don't drive it, gives you the red light. It's more of a suggestion to me. So it has two, uh, it has two, two sensors basically. And I guess they take a look at the voltage across both sensors, and they do a little test. And if it's off, it throws the error code. 
I read something this morning that had a really, really good explanation of it. And I'll try to leave a link in the uh, in the description of this video. It really did a nice job kind of describing how it um, checks the voltage from the gas pedal, from the fuel, the, the gas pedal sender, and the um, throttle position sensor. Drive-by wire, so no old school throttle cable going from the firewall out to the throttle position sensor and the uh, throttle body. All right, let's take it for a test drive. See what happens. So far, so good. I can dig it. Seatbelt for safety. Beautiful morning out here. Normal, normal throttle response. I don't really feel any different. Rides like normal. Could be a connector. Who really knows? Normal throttle response. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. The warranty work performed by our factory trained technicians to Mitsubishi, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Volkswagen, and Fiat Auto Parts to car loan assistance. We do it all. And we are here to take care of absolutely all of your automotive needs. And we'll have our representative on the line with you That's in nice. just a matter of moments. They always say that. Call it for parts. Parts research. Proudly serving you now for so, 35 years. You check the dealer, or you check your local parts house, see who dealer. has it available. If you are in need of a brand new or quality pre-owned vehicle, we have a... Okay, so after making a couple phone calls, it appears that two different auto zones have the parts we need, which is great. I also just got on, just got done talking to the dealer Again, I, I try to go dealer as much as I can, but the, where am I going here? The throttle sensor on the gas pedal, that was like 250 bucks. Again, Mopar factory parts, guaranteed. Uh, I get it. Uh, and the, the whole, throttle body itself that has the throttle position sensor the whole throttle body that was close to five hundred dollars so I think we're gonna go aftermarket with this um, I hate to do it but um, you know I know I'll get uh, get a little bit of pushback for using aftermarket parts but for six hundred dollars oh geez busy day at the jeez Brian Hoskins Ford jeez um, Chris you can wow. to answer Woo. Busy day at the Jeep shop today, everybody. I'm getting the I'm getting the Explorer inspected. I got to fix the Jeep. Man, there's a lot of stuff going on today. Holy Toledo, Christ! Well, I'll get this guy's call later. I know. Car's done. All right, well, let's go over to AutoZone and get these parts we need. Okay, AutoZone number one.
success. Got my key. I'm going to say right parts at the right prices. Let's go to AutoZone. Golden Rams and Westchester University and AutoZone. Success, part number two. Always something. Head home. Okay, so now that we've pulled the codes and we got the parts, went on a little joyride. Yeah, codes uh, 2135, throttle, pedal position, voltage. And then uh, P0123, thr throttle, pedal position, sensor A. So, so this is where it gets a little gray, right? So everything that I've read, um, it really says it's either the throttle body and the throttle position sensor, or it's the pedal. And for a couple hundred dollars, and I don't feel like back probing and checking voltage. And, and you really should, you should bring out your voltmeter. You should make sure, you know, sensor A and sensor B on the throttle position sensor or the throttle body, you know, check all that stuff. Do a good thorough diagnosis of, um, you know, the voltage that each one of those sensors is putting out. Um, I'm opting to kind of skip a couple steps with the electrical, you know, back probing and checking the sensors, checking the voltage. I'm just gonna go straight to, oh, my dog's outside. <laughs> I'm just going to go straight to replacing the parts. But one thing you do want to do is before you go and install parts is check all the connections. So we'll at least do that. Um, but again, you know, there are good write-ups out on the internet that kind of show you, you know, how to test for voltage and how to check, you know, pin A and pin B uh, to check that the, the, the right voltage is coming out and exactly which part is actually um, at fault. Um, but for, you know, I think the, the, the pedal was like $111 and the um, throttle body was $200. So um, for $300, um, I'm kind of, I'm short in a couple steps, but to, to me, that's, that's how I decided to do it. Um, you might, you know, break out all your multimeters and everything and do all that stuff. Um, that's good. And, and that's a really thorough way to do it. Uh, I'm opting to not do that. So uh, another thing with the parts is I did call a Jeep dealership. And for the throttle body itself, they wanted like 400 and some odd dollars. Um, not bad, uh, but when I could get it through uh, aftermarket, um, half price, that's pretty good. And the pedal, uh, the pedal itself, I think was like $200. So you're looking at, you look at, uh, you know, what are they, $400, so 600 plus tax, right? So that's, you know, it's almost, you know, 650. Um, both of these parts do have a lifetime warranty. I got them from AutoZone, so if they do have an issue in the future, they throw codes, I can get it from any AutoZone in the United States. So that's kind of my rationale for not using uh, multimeters and checking my volts and for using non-factory parts. Me, I try to use factory as much as possible, as you guys know from my other videos, but um, AutoZone, stuff should, AutoZone aftermarket stuff should do just fine. If not, it has a lifetime warranty and um, I'll be able to swap it out. So. Um, two parts, let's uh, get to getting, so let's install. All right, let's open up the hood and see what we got. I already took the, uh, I already took the cover off. I'm gonna go get something for that. I don't like leaning that on the decal. All right, it's hot out here. All right, so this doesn't look too bad. Here, check this out. The 
alternator is mounted backwards. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I don't get it, but whatever. It's an engineer. So there's the uh, throttle body slash uh, throttle position sensor all in one. Uh, tube comes off. Um, I don't think we need to take this off. We'll just take this. <clears throat> we'll just loosen this. There's a plug, and there's a. We might need to take this off just to have room. But uh, oh, there's the oil filter. Probably change the oil tomorrow. But uh, yeah, a plug and uh, four bolts, and the throttle body is out. So we'll start from outside, and we'll work our way in. That seems like a logical thing to do. All right. Yeah, and you can fast forward this, whatever. I'll take the hose clamp off to get to the air intake hose. Maybe I'll take the whole thing off. I don't know. We'll see if it becomes a problem. It's weird working on stuff that's not oil covered and rusty. I love you, XJ. Don't worry about that. Fancy. Yeah, I'll take that thing off. That just makes life easier. Looks like uh, it's either an 8 or a 10 millimeter. Scalpel. That's an 8. That's a 10. It's a 9. Get out of here. Stupid Jeeps. It's a 9. 8, 9, it's too much, guys. Kill me, Smalls. Little doodads here. Set those aside and lose those for later. Take the puke tank hose off. What in the sweet fancy Moses is this thing? This little dongle hanging down. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh we got a sensor in here. Hold on. Don't go, don't go ham sandwich yet. Yeah, watch out for that little sensor right there. Look at this thing. What is that? Jeep, what is this? What do I do with it? Why is it like that? Is that the turbo? Hmm, okay. Alright, yeah, that's a good thing. Take the tube off. You get better access to everything. So the wiring looks, oops, some zip ties, my favorite. Oh, please. Oh, oh God. Oh. Found it. Yeah, let's get the zip tie off here. Make sure you cut all the wires, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's for that sensor and I don't see any issues with the wires. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I don't see. That's the throttle position sensor slash throttle body plug. Excuse me, throttle body plug. I mean, the wire loom is all dried out, but the wires look totally fine. Yeah, maybe we'll put some more wire loom on that. Just kind of clean that up. Yeah, we'll do that. Can't send her home like that. Like a little security type thing. Let's try not to break it. Let's try and get in there. There we go. And I suppose that just pulls out. Pushes out. Breaks out. There you go. Okay. Looks good in there. Doesn't look like any any corrosion or any kind of problems. Wires look solid. That's not a wiring issue. Let's see. Let's make sure. I mean, it wasn't messed with. I mean, it's a 2017, so nobody messed with it. All right. Like I said, we'll we'll rerun re -run that wire loom. I feel like it. 
Yeah, we should. It's all dry rotted. Yeah, I mean, the wires look good. No issue. Plugs look good. It looks solid. No, Like I said, no corrosion. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what we can get into next. Let's take those uh, four bolts off. All right, now we got those wires out of the way. Eight millimeter. The air filter looks clean. Nice and clean. Put all your bolts in the same spot so you know you don't lose them. Let me get these bottom ones. Right, the bottom ones in. One, two, three. Three bolts. There's the fourth. Okay. one so make sure you hold it oh jeez ta-da she's out doesn't look broken okay so we have both parts out looks pretty similar always good to measure up the part you're replacing with the part that is going in factory non-factory but it looks pretty nice again like I said um, I would have loved to have gone with the factory part but uh, with the price difference kind of couldn't beat it and it has a lifetime warranty it can't be the lifetime warranty so I think we should be okay sorry I'm getting everybody seasick it's sunny I think we should be okay with the uh, aftermarket part so uh, let's uh, install this bad boy and go from there all right There's a little rubber gasket around here. I did not get a new one. I wish the new I wish the kit came with one. Let me check the box. No, it does not appear to have one. That's kind of a bummer. Okay, we'll just have to reuse the old one. That's alright. Now you're, you're screwing this back into plastic, so you got to be gentle. I'm going to strip the plastic. I'm assuming that this is a pretty common issue to have since well, it seems like all the local park stores had them either on the shelf or available for next day delivery, so it has to be pretty common, I would assume. You know, having an electronic throttle body and a pedal on the shelf seems kind of kind of weird, right? But if it's something that breaks often, they have to have it. Jeep has 100 and 115,000 miles on it, so this is an electronic part. You know, it gets very hot. You know, it's lots of vibration, so I guess you can only get so much out of it, and then it breaks or goes out of tolerance. Neat little servo motor, I guess, that does that. Okay, installed. I'd like to put this wire loom on here. Slightly wider than the old wire loom it's replacing, which is good. Ah, perfect length too, actually. You guys don't want to see me fighting with wire loom, so I'll just kind of, we'll cut the commercial and uh, I'll get back to this. All right. Let's button this up and then we'll uh, 
go inside. Good to go. I'll just reassemble the intake tubing. Wherever I put that, oh, here it is. Uh, where's that plug? Hold on here. I guess it goes like that. Seems right. Pinch the tube. <laughs> it should be. Uh, can I take it off now? Oh, here we go. There's two ways to do it now, except that it's pinched between them. There we go. Ah, jeez. Here we go. Solid. There you go. Okay. Done and done. Looks good. We put new loom on there, you saw that. I'll zip tie that, maybe I'll just leave it, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Okay, so part two. Let's take a look inside the old Jeep here. Let's see what we got. All right, so you're down here on the floor. That's your gas pedal, of course. And again, this is a, there's no throttle cable, it's all by wire. So it has two bolts. And boy, you can't, you can see one of them. There's a bolt there, and then there's one kind of up here. I don't know if I can get my camera all the way up there, but I have a good feeling this access panel. Oh, I hope that was supposed to break like that. Set that aside, yoink. Hopefully that will get us what we need, at least to see where we need to go. 10 millimeter. Oh, and the bolt on the uh, pedal is also 10 millimeter. So let's take this off and see what we get. Maybe it'll allow us to gain access to that last bolt, maybe a little bit better. Let's see. It's hot out here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm kind of ready for fall. I always enjoy summer. Always do, but kind of Kind of looking forward to fall. Favorite time of year. Long enough bolts here, guys. Jeez. Come on, Jeep. Oh, come 
goes up and out. Makes sense. Yank it on that. Nope, doesn't do you anything. Doesn't give you a darn thing. Well, maybe the plug. Yeah, you can get, looks like you can get to the plug from here. But that second bolt, man, I don't think I'm gonna be able to bring you in there. Yeah, that doesn't do a darn thing for you. Because you can see, here's the pedal. Oh, let me bring this. Jeez, how do they expect people to do this? So you see the pedal. This is the one I showed you. I'm sorry. That's the one I showed you right here. That's on the bottom. But this fella all the way up at the top, it's almost like you have to like go right there. Um, so again, just know that there's two bolts, one down here and one way up here, which you'll never see. But let's see what we can do. Let's get this thing out. All right, let's get the easy one first. You know, taking it out might be the uh, easy part. Trying to put it back in, on especially that top one. Give me a break. What a joke. All right, let's see if we can make sense of it here. If I can at least feel it. Why would I be able to? Maybe from up here? Yeah. That, taking that panel off didn't do a damn thing either. Hmm. I think, no, is that it? That's not it. I feel the plug. Jeez. Insane. All right, let me figure this out. Killing me. Okay, Jeep, if you design a part that fails often, you shouldn't put little brackets in front of it bolted to this this little thin piece of plastic had two bolts on it what a joke fighting with that for like 10 minutes so i'm going to try my best to explain where it's at but it's basically oh, sorry it's up against that wall see where that bolt hole is it, le it leans up against that uh that little firewall there and it connects this little box right here what this is I don't know and I frankly don't care but it's made in Germany so it's pretty cool but I'm sure it controls something it has plugs in it and it was like it was like right there and without moving that you'll never be able to unplug the pedal and you'll never be able to get that second bolt so this has to come out so once you get that out and you're gentle with the plugs and you got the air box, the air vent in its place, you can see that plug back there, that's the top of the plug for the, uh, for the pedal. So once you unplug that, it will show the second top bolt for um, removing this part. So let's go ahead and unplug that. Helpful hint, if you remove the plug that is closer to the, I guess the one side, the cord, the, the wire is super long and you're left with this guy here and you have full access to the plug, which is right here. So now we can just kind of remove it. Like I said, now we can remove it. Okay, there's the plug. And way back here is the bolt. Eight millimeter, I think you just use a, a short little extension and that should come out. Should being the operative word. So let's not try to lose our mind. Let's keep our cool. Let's see if we can get this thing out. Give it to me. Not today, Jeep. Not today. So the original one, it's a Hella actually. I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty cool. So, top bolts out. There's, there's really no good way to explain how to get it. Um, you just gotta finagle it. You just gotta get it. Um, but that's it. This is what we're after. That's the new one that's gonna go in. So we'll obviously cinch up the top bolt and then we'll do the bottom one and plug it back in and just do the reverse of what we just did. That was a pain in the ass. Stupid, stupid design. All the stuff, to, 
you had to remove just to get to that, right? I mean, look at that. It's all buried in there. No way to get it. So yeah, this panel is key. You have to take this panel out. There's no other way you can do it. Take the panel out, take the bracket out, unplug one of the boxes. Who knows what that does, but I'm sure it's pretty important. Couple bolts, some swearing, some praying, and uh, you can get it. Again, you gotta be patient, it's a Jeep. You know, it's gotta be patient. There's really no good way to get your big meat hooks up into that little spot to put that top bolt in. So take your 10 millimeter socket, stick the bolt in there, put some tape around it, and uh, put it back on the wrench and see if you can get a couple threads to catch. And once it catches, the, the tape will, uh, won't be important anymore. But there's really no way to get your hands up in there. So uh, we'll just put tape around that, throw it up in there, tighten it up, plug it in, done. All right, so I did manage to weasel the camera in here to kind of show you the tight fit and the plug. So let's see if I can plug it in. Nope, got to go from the top. Make it click. And you can see that top bolt kind of sneaking back there. You see how tight it is. All right, now that that's plugged in, let's um, put that little plastic bracket back in and put that box in and then uh, we'll fire it up and give it a test ride. All that's left to do is put the engine cover back on, clear the check engine codes, and uh, take it for a test drive. So I know some folks will be like, oh, you should leave the check engine codes on and not clear them. The computer will clear itself. Two schools of thought. Um, you can leave them on, and if the errors go away, the computer will realize that everything's been fixed. Check engine light will go out. Um, I'm for the school of clear the codes. If the uh, error persists, they'll reappear. One way is one way, and one way is the other way. So that's how I do it. So let's get this cover back on. This cover's the hardest part. Nice. I think that looks pretty good well that's a wrap on this video everybody hope you found it helpful uh, as far as difficulty wasn't too bad a little bit tedious getting that pedal in that top bolt as you guys know was a real pain in the rear end to get to but man we always persevere and that's what we do guys who work on Jeeps we always make it work so look uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comment box uh, what I'll do is I'll leave the uh, part numbers and a link to where I found the parts um, you can also find them on Rock Auto, things like that, but I had to get this car fixed this weekend, so I got them local. Um, but I'll leave a link in the uh, description uh, to where you can find these parts and part numbers and everything. So, look, any questions, leave me in the comment box. Love to help you. Take care of yourselves, take care of your Jeeps, and we'll catch you up on the next video. Time to go for a test drive. I got the top down. Let's roll. Talk to you guys later. Welcome up for safety.